In this video, we're gonna learn how to make a brown stock. So just like with our white stock, our components of our stock are going to be our bones, our mirepoix, and our water. However, the method is going to be just a little bit different. Um, you can see here that I've st I'm starting with roasted bones. So uh, these are beef bones that I roasted. Uh, these roasted in a convection oven on 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. And you can see I really got a really nice dark color on these bones, which is exactly what I want. Uh, that's what's going to give the brown to our brown stock. The next step is I'm going to take some tomato paste and a spatula and just coat my bones with a little bit of tomato paste. This tomato paste is going to accomplish a few things. We're actually going to put this back into the oven uh, and allow this tomato paste to brown. It's probably only going to take about 10 or 12 minutes. Uh, so the tomato paste is going to brown, it's also, so it's going to give a nice rich color, uh, but it's also going to add some acid to our stock, and that acid is going to help us remove uh, a lot of the collagen that's trapped uh, within these bones to give us a nice rich stock in the end. Great, so I've got a little bit of that tomato paste on each of these bones. Now I'm going to add my vegetables, my mirepoix in. And I'm just going to coat my mirepoix in with my rendered beef fat here. Just kind of toss it in. If it gets some of that tomato paste on it, that's fine. Okay. We just want this to get tossed in that beef fat so that those can start to brown as well. Great. I'm going to put this uh, into our oven. It's going to be uh, about 10 or 12 minutes just to get a nice brown on those, uh, uh, on that tomato paste, and we'll check back in then. All right, so it's been about 12 minutes and our bones are done, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these out of the oven. And I'm gonna wanna deglaze my pan. So while this pan is still nice and hot, I wanna add a little bit of water and then really scrape the bottom of the pan well. You can see all of these brown bits that are burnt onto the bottom of the pan, uh, and that's called fond, and that fond is going to have uh, quite a bit of flavor for us. Um, I'm just deglazing with water uh, today. I have the acid that I need uh, from my tomato paste, um, but you could certainly deglaze with wine, uh, you could deglaze with brandy, uh, you know, stock, whatever it is you'd like to deglaze with. Uh, is going to work fine. It's just going to be important that we deglaze while the pan is hot so that we can get up that fond, which is going to give us some really nice flavor into our stock. All right, so now that I have that fond scraped, I'm going to go ahead and get my bones into my stock pot here. those veggies in and then I'm going to scrape out the rest of that juice that I have here. I have that nice uh, dissolved fond in there. Don't want to waste all that good flavor that I've worked to get. It's all going to make our stock nice and flavorful. Okay. Next, I'm going to cover my bones with my cold water. Remember, we always want to use cold water when making a stock. It's going to help us uh, extract that collagen from those bones. Okay, I have my water added. I'm going to go ahead and tie on my sachet. Okay. So I'm going to bring this to a simmer. Um, 
And I'm gonna let this uh, simmer for between eight and 10 hours. Uh, it's quite a long process, especially when you're using beef bones. Um, so it's gonna take about eight to 10 hours to fully extract that collagen and all of the, uh, the flavor uh, within that. Also remember, as this is cooking, I'm uh, occasionally going to uh, depoulage or skim uh, the top of the stock to remove any of those impurities. So we're gonna let this cook and uh, we'll check back in about eight or 10 hours. So it's been about eight hours and our brown stock is finished cooking. Uh, as the stock's been cooking, I've been skimming uh, any scum off the top that's accumulated uh, and making sure that it's maintained that nice simmer, making sure that I still see bubbles coming up through, uh, but not that it's a rolling boil. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn my stock off and strain my stock. Once again, for straining my stock, I'm gonna go uh, through the top um, <clears throat> I'm also using a chinois. Uh, some people will use um, a chinois lined with cheesecloth. Um, this is going to help collect any of those um, coagulated proteins. Um, so if you are really concerned about the clarity of your stock, um, you certainly can uh, line a regular strainer uh, or a chinois like this um, with uh, cheesecloth and strain through. Um, but this stock is pretty clear. Um, we didn't blanch the bones and I'm not going to uh, take that step. Uh, this provides a clear enough stock for the purposes that I'm gonna use it for. If I was making a consomme, I probably would have blanched my bones first uh, and then I would have used that, that uh, cheesecloth layer. See, as I'm uh, getting towards the bottom here, I'm tilting that pan a little bit, tilting the stock pot uh, a little bit, uh, just trying to collect all that good stock into the corner uh, so that I don't waste uh, any of that stock that we've spent all these hours trying to, to make. Okay. and just strain this out. All right, so this is my strained beef stock here. You can see I've got such a nice rich color uh, from this stock because uh, I went ahead and roasted those bones first to get my nice brown stock. So now what I need to do is I need to cool this stock. Uh, so I generally wouldn't put um, hot stock like this into the refrigerator, especially in large quantities that we might make um, either in a class or in, uh, in industry. Uh, we're gonna wanna cool it down first. So there's a couple ways that we can cool it down. Um, I'm gonna use an ice bath. So in this tub here, uh, I have ice and water. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick my stock into this ice and water. And I'm gonna leave a spoon in my, my stock here. And occasionally, okay, it doesn't need to be every two or five minutes, but you know, I always say whenever you walk by it, just give it a quick stir. And really we wanna get this down. Um, ideally we would get it down out of the temperature danger zone, but really we just wanna get it down um, even to room temperature would be okay before we put it into our refrigerator. The other way that we can uh, chill a stock uh, is through um, an ice wand. Um, so these are going to be like very large looking water bottles. Uh, and we can fill them with water and freeze them and then put them into the stock and chill the stock from the outside in. Uh, I'm partial to, to this method. I find this very efficient. Um, everyone has some form of setup that they can use this for. A smaller container they can put inside a larger container uh, with, uh, with ice. Not everyone has the freezer space for a big, uh, a big wand uh, filled with ice. So this is very, very practical uh, for chilling stock. Uh, probably will let this chill, um, you know, an hour or two before, uh, you know, evaluating and then putting uh, into the refrigerator. The last thing uh, with beef stock is um, those beef bones had a good amount of meat left on them uh, and a good amount of fat left on them. And a lot of that fat has rendered out. Um, so there's a couple things that you can do. As this stock begins to separate, I can take my ladle and I can just start to skim the fat off the top okay, and discard it now. 
What I'm partial to doing is going ahead and chilling it just like this, and then once the stock chills, that fat will all coagulate uh, at the top. We know that animal fat is going to be uh, generally uh, solid at room temperature, um, and it's going to be very, very hard at refrigerator temperatures. So generally what I'll do is I'll store the stock like this, uh, let the fat uh, coagulate and harden on the top, and then before I either use it or freeze it for later use, I'll remove that fat cat from the top. All right, let's review. When making a brown stock, we're going to roast our bones and our mirepoix to get the desired color for our stock. Next, we add an acidic component to this stock to help extract the collagen from the bones to get a nice rich stock. Finally, it's important to chill a stock before storing in a refrigerator.